pretty. This is Julia with So Pretty. Today we're doing Kiss Pour Plop and layering gold mica on layers of white and two different cuts. So we're going to start out the recipe with castor oil at 7.43 ounces. And it's important that you get exact. And now I've started to put in the coconut and the coconut is 10.43. 8.2 ounces. It's 33% of the recipe, 33.80 to be exact. And just in case you didn't know, coconut oil is very conditioning, but it's also very harsh on the cleaning. So make sure you don't go over about 30% of the recipe for coconut because it is very harsh. And of course, you just saw me put in the olive oil, which is 7.43 ounces, and of course, the palm oil, which in this case are flakes. But here is our great smell. This is this is a uh, pink peony from Brambleberry and Midnight Waters. I usually do about 1.5 of the scent I want to be stronger, and then 0.5 of the um, other scent. Now, if it's an essential oil, do two ounces. If it's just the like the brambleberry scents, I would do 1.5 and split it up the way you like it there. Now we're adding the NaOH at 4.6 ounces. The water was 12.16 ounces. Always add the lye to the water, not the other way around. And it's time for us to set this aside. And I'm going to show you what I like to do about adding your scent. I do it before I add the lye to the oil because a lot of times the oils and the fragrances are naughty and they like to speed up the saponification process uh, to bring to trace. And so as you saw I put a little bit of oil in each of these little cups. Now I find that it, it emulsifies just fine and so when we go to do a kiss pour, it actually helps it stay thinner longer. Now here, I'm going to try two, I was going to try two techniques. Um, I usually use my bulb and, um, and I'm setting up both so that we can do both. But I, in this case, I ended up just using um, the strainer. And so here we're just testing to make it sure to make sure that it gets to the temperature that we would like to work with. And I ended up seeing that I moved it accidentally too far in, so I en I ended up moving it closer to 95. So I always keep a little bucket close by to put my extras in so that I don't put it on the table. I don't know if you saw that. But um, in this process, I always like to make sure everything is close by and ready because when the lye water is to the proper temperature, I I want I like to work fast so that it doesn't um, get too gelled while I'm trying to pour. And thus, you'll always see me stirring a lot um, because it's it helps it stay uh, more liquidy and blended. And that's really important. So I haven't added um, any of the saponified liquid back into the color, um, the color cups yet. You'll see. So this is where we're adding the oil to the lye. And you want to make sure you get every bit of that oil into the bucket with the lye. It's important. We're doing right down to the very... Um, ounce and beyond and we want to get every drop that we possibly can. I would suggest using a bigger, just like I did, I switched to a bigger um, squeegee spatula. Some people have different names for this tool. Anyway, it's really important that you get every drop so that your recipe will turn out well. I love this recipe. I'll be happy to share it with you at the end of the video. I've kind of been telling you all along how to do it. And um, if you're a new soaper, this is probably the part that's the hardest for you, um, where you bring it to trace. Now, if your water, lye and water are really uh, low temp, like 90, 95 degrees, it takes a little bit more to bring it to trace. I just barely, 
barely went over and it started getting a little thick on me but not so bad so I figured you know what this is good I'm gonna stop I don't want it to get too thick that's the one thing that new soapers do is they make it too thick and it looks like cottage cheese it's chunky so if you want to bring it just just barely to trace you can finish it off in a 130 degree oven by putting it in the oven and then immediately shutting it off you see it's getting kind of thick there you immediately shut it off after you get your finished product in the oven and then it'll go through gel phase in that warm oven and then you let it cool down and then maybe even the next day or that evening depending on what time that you did your soaping um, and then when you bring it out as I'll show you in this video it has gone through a perfect gel phase I'm telling you this is the favorite soap recipe I've ever made now if you don't know how to make your own recipe go back to my other video on soapcalc.net and I'll go through the process now that's my longest video it's 30 minutes you might find it very educational if you're serious about soaping now you don't have to be a pretty soaper I wasn't gonna be but I had so much fun in the creativity process I found it for a mother of nine to be a great great release for me and a creative way to express myself and to find something that I joy and have joy in in this wonderful hobby and I spent probably two hundred dollars to get started but I, that's with everything and I was able to soap for a few months and just here and there I bought extras um, and I took it out of my food budget and because um, I always buy oils anyway on my food budget but I found it just um, not very horrible I mean you can make your recipe according to um, you know the the soap that I'm sorry the oils that you already have in your in your cupboard and as you see I've poured the white on the bottom as the bottom layer and I covered it and did the layering process with the gold mica and now um, I did the plop drop kiss pour so I had three drops across the white with the kiss pour meaning the blue and the pink go together in three plops and you saw that and then I put more white which I didn't cover it all the way and I don't I didn't really think that mattered and then I'm putting a lot more of the ingredients together here and I wanted to do like a um, a kiss pour all the way across and it was kind of thickening up and it got slow so I hurried it up a bit which you know it's your soap you do what you want this isn't exactly what you do in this technique you should just let it go over on its own and um, like I said I'm an impatient soaper but I'm learning I'm learning patience it's a good thing to learn patience with because you know what it's very forgiving all in all when you're done with your soap you're gonna love it it's gonna be so pretty it really will and, and so this is the part where it's time for me to get more of the gold mica for the layer and I, and I put a generous amount because I want to see it I want to be able to see it when I look at the soap and then here um, it looks like I may, might need a spatula or a squeegee whatever you'd like to call it what do you guys call it leave the leave it in the comments because I'm thinking I don't call my my tools um, the right names and sometimes I go blank and I can't think um, you know I'm getting older that happens sometimes very busy so I got as much as I wanted to get out of there and so I'm gonna try to smooth it a little bit so that we can have that really nice thick layer there as the last white layer for the soap okay and then I need to put a little bit more gold mica but I think I might have forgotten and then I put it down I'm like wait a minute I gotta get the gold mica on there but um, it uses a generous amount I I went through um, nearly all of the probably quarter cup of mica I probably used too much but here I'm having a little hard time it's getting really thick so I'm doing back to the three plop method again the and it looks like I'm doing four anyway so I did several methods in this same soap but wait till you see how pretty it's so pretty it really is 
So it's really difficult sometimes when you're soaping, you know, things start to go wrong, you don't know what to do. Um, just make it make it your own. I mean, if you're trying a new challenge, soap challenge and you mess up, it gets frustrating, but still make it your own. It's a pretty soap. You're going to want to use it. The recipe is fantastic. And people that are non-soapers really are absolutely uh, amazed at how beautiful the soaps are and how do you make it that color and many people don't understand that that mica is a mineral and it just washes down the drain it doesn't seep into your skin it's not horrid for your body it's just healthy and so here I am just adding as much of the rest of the ingredients and to try to make them all kind of look more uniform and you know I make mistakes but it's just whatever you like okay so at this part I have those three plops and and the three plops on the bottom so I have the dowel rod there because I wanted to you know when you use just a regular plop a round circle and you put a line through it like in your frosting or in your soap it kind of makes it look heart ish but my my uh see the hearts but it had set up a little bit too much and so that's why I keep dropping it because I don't want to have holes and so here I am filling the um see now I gotta do my there you go there's there's the the bulb that I use so I did use to I couldn't remember I'm doing this after the fact but here is after I brought it out of the 130 degree oven and let it cool in the oven, which you can take it out if you want. It feels very, very um, uh, wet and jiggly. And so I like to turn it upside down. And sometimes if it's too full, I have to stand it on its side. It just depends on um, how full I made it. Yes, the recipe is about the same every time, but sometimes I'll, I'll use a little um, tiny mold for samples and then it makes it a smaller recipe. But it's already beautiful to me. And I wanted some of the colors to stick out on the top so that it'd be more rustic looking. That's also very popular. But I, I just do it because I like it. I love using mica on top. It just makes it look finished and pretty. So this is my new soap cutter. Sometimes I use the like cheese string cutter that one and sometimes I use my um, knife it just depends so here I'm deciding how I want to cut it now sometimes I don't have a plan so I decided it decided to cut it into chunks and then cut it the opposite way so that's so pretty look at that it has the lines in it and even at the end of this video I didn't show it I didn't show any of the pieces cleaned up with my planer which is the opposite of the cutter as you see and, and so sometimes it's kind of sticky and so I let this go 24 hours so this was fine um, so I just wanted to show you how pretty and I'll show you a close-up at the end of the video as well and show you a little bit of the sides and you know there's um, I think everything comes more clear once you plane it you know it gets away some of the um, the bleed over from when it goes through the gel process sometimes it kind of um, well it saponifies and um, goes through gel process and saponification I believe is just the longer word for soap so um, it's the only process that combines oil and water together if you think about it that way it's pretty mind-blowing but oh look you can see that line the gold lines not as well on the bottom but it is there nonetheless so pretty just love it and the smell oh it smells so good it smells like flowers and soft baby powder almost um but it's a little better than baby powder i i i am i have no words so here i'm going to cut it on the opposite the opposite way i'm just looking to see if i'm 
going to measure it correctly, which I didn't. One is a little bit bigger than the other. But you know what? I, sometimes I do that on purpose because I really like a thick bar. And I give away most of my stuff anyway. And um, I just love it. Oh, it smells so good. And I love bright colors like the pink, the blue, the purple, white. And by the way, I used... Um, the kaolin clay and I stopped using the titanium dioxide because it just could it just didn't blend very well and I just feel like you know I like the off-white it looks more natural it is more natural and the kaolin clay always makes your soap creamy isn't this pretty when I finished making this video I realized I didn't have my light all the way up <laughs> where I could have had a little bit more light but it turned out okay you know it's hard to um, it's hard to make videos it's not it's not that easy so my little girl came in well she's 13 she came in and got that piece she rolled it into a ball and went and used it at the sink now I have done that before and I wasn't afraid because this soap is um, pretty hard and it had gone through a gel process and I knew she'd be okay and she came back and said this soap is so soft lathery and creamy and she really liked it So here I'm trying to figure out which way I'd like to cut it. I like cutting it in different ways. It, it shows a different um, mirror image. And I think it's fun. It's fun to play with your soap. This is probably my favorite part. I think it's everybody's favorite part when you actually see what the soap looks like and there's your mirror image it's different than the other ones I like it it's kind of fun it's fun to have it's fun to have the ability to not worry about it and stress out oh will anybody like it it doesn't matter as long as you like it I just make my soaps for me my family and my friends or whoever I give it to I do I have a neighbor who loves it so here I am showing you the different ways that I cut my soap. So I hope you like the video. It's, um, you don't have to do these two techniques together. You can just layer the color and use the gold to layer in between colors all the way up. That's a really pretty soap, which I have kind of done in one of my other videos but I just put a bunch of white at the bottom and then just to color at the top so beautiful isn't it so pretty so pretty well like share and subscribe this is Julia with so pretty <gasps> so pretty